Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great trading week, uh, phenomenal action. Um, you know, if you've been following kind of this broadcast for the last, just the last seven, uh, you know, the last, you know, four or five days, uh, you kind of know every single level, uh, especially to the downside, it was, was violated on uh, the queues, on, you know, major stocks that we all trade, NVIDIA's and Tesla's of the world. A uh, lot of stuff going on uh, this week. We'll get to that in a second. But first, for all you guys who are brand new to the channel, uh, please subscribe, like, share, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Uh, again, we try to put a level-headed um, take on the financial markets with an unbiased opinion. And that's kind of the most important part uh, going into this week. Um, you're, you're going to see a lot of people, okay, this week, sensationalize what they think is about to happen okay I'm not saying they're right I'm not saying they're wrong but there's a lot of people out there um that have an incredible um mongering effect right mongering effect uh on life the perspective of life is always um half glass half empty which is fine okay not a great way to live which is fine uh you're gonna have a lot of people this weekend because of all the information that we got over the past week start fear mongering put the you know the put starting to put the panic into uh into into the air into the universe and before you know before we get started I, I'm, I'm going to say this much um i traded through uh the financial crisis of 2002 from 2007 uh to 2009 okay uh, before we even get to that before we even even put that uh out there i i want everybody especially to the new traders take a breath right take a deep breath you're going to see here a lot of information a lot of speculation a lot of um you know a lot of people just out there for clickbaits and for likes and clicks to shock factor um just i want everybody to relax and take a deep breath for all you guys uh, who who started trading prior to 2009 you kind of know where i'm about to go with this okay um number one let's kind of start off with the week and then we'll get to uh, we'll get to the current events. So the week action packed, uh, full of, uh, full of news headlines all over the place. Again, you had the two day meeting, uh, with, uh, chairman Powell. Okay. Uh, a lot of hawkish statements came out of there and basically, you know, didn't really give us any clarity of what was going to happen or what their, uh, what their, uh, plans, a current plans of action. Again, you, you had speculation coming out of his mouth that no decision has been made on the next uh, Fed meeting, could it be 50 basis points, 25, 75, he left everything up in the air. Uh, and obviously the markets didn't like that. Uh, it, it's, it's an obvious, if you look at towards uh, the end of the week, uh, every single index was down at least four and a half percent. Obviously a big deal, right? Kind of a big deal here. Um, you had your jobs data come out. Uh, it was another hot read uh, for the month. Uh, the market, again, did not like that news, continued to sell. And we closed pretty much at the bottom of the range here on the queues. So we'll get to the specific numbers going into next week. Uh, and on the S&P 500, we broke, we broke, we just broke everything. We broke the 200-day moving average uh, and a lot of moves down. As you can imagine, uh, the S&P um, is, you know, dominated, right, by banks. Um, and this is where so all the news, you know, all the news is bearish and bearish and bearish, uh, and the markets kind of was selling first, asked questions later, and then came the big story of the week, and that was uh, SI, uh, SVB Bank, right? So SVB Bank, for all you guys don't know, uh, is a regional bank uh, out of California. Uh, I believe, I believe, and again, I didn't, I didn't dive into this deep, because again, there's a lot of layers, uh, and this is the first layer uh, to be peeled, but SIVB uh, is a regional bank. Uh, they have an incredible amount of business with startups, right? Um, with startup companies, they obviously have, you know, the ca California-based company. They actually have a lot of uh, venture capitalist money, all that stuff. Okay, 
So they came out with a PR that they were accessing the debt market, which is usually, again, a normal thing. So, and I'm reading this, of course, by the way, um, they, they raised nearly $2.3 billion to cover unforeseen asset impairments, most related to long-term treasuries, right? So the stock really got hit on Friday, uh, Thursday, it, you know, 60% moved down on Thursday because you're not, you're not just talking about using capital to expand business or pay down debt. Now you're talking about capital, you know, to raising capital to keep solvency, right? You know, just try, try to stay solvent. And that was a big deal. As you can imagine, uh, every bank, uh, you know, just it's a, it's a shoot first, ask questions later society. Every bank from regional banks to uh, to the biggest banks in the world, the JP Morgans of the world, got absolutely slammed, right? Absolutely slammed because, again, the first thing people think of, oh, my God, this is 2007 all over again. We don't know that yet, right? We don't know that. A lot of people are turning around and go, you watch. This is it, you know, and again, going back to the, you know, going back to, um, you know, to the fear mongering. Let's just all relax, take a deep breath. 2007, 2008, all the way to 2009, was apples to hand grenades, what's happening here yet, so far? We don't know what's going to happen, okay? But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. 2007, 2008, and 2009, everybody was over leveraged, right? They were giving out uh, no money down homes. People who were making $40,000 uh, a year had three properties with no money down. And the problem is with all these toxic loans that were uh, handed out, there was big maturity payments, right? Big balloon maturity payments coming to due. So when you have a $40,000 income, right? When you have a 40, 50,000 income, $60,000 income, and you have three rental properties, no money down, right? No money down. And your balloon payment goes from, let's say 1200 bucks a month that your tenant is paying, right? To all of a sudden $3,200 a month and you have three, four separate properties, there's no way you can make payments, right? No way you can make payments and you start to default and everybody started to default. You know, anybody who had those no money, uh, no money down loans, they started to default. And what the problem was all these banks that had all these loans, they were taking the hits for the remainder, right? They were taking the hits and that started a, a, a really aggressive domino effect. And that led to insurance company, mortgage brokers, anything that had to do with with all these loans, and a lot of them were tied up, right? A lot of tied up very creatively. Um, when all these loans got tied up and people started defaulting on these loans, it was an Armageddon type of scenario that um, that almost you know collapsed the financial system as we know it. Again, I'm not an expert on stuff. Even to this day, could I really give you uh, a fine line, you know, you know, fine line documentary series of what happened? No, okay, that wasn't my job. I'm not a smart guy. Uh, we kind of just roll with the flow, but I know the basics of it, right? This is completely different. Um, the majority of the world is deleveraged, and, the, and that's a fact, right? It's an, it's an absolute fact. Nobody is giving out, uh, well, I can't say nobody, and who knows what's going on these days, but you know, the, the standard proxy for getting a home loan, so my, my recent home that I purchased in 2016, it was at least 20, it was a 20, 25% down. They wanted to make sure, I think at some point it, you had at least two years worth of payments in your, uh, in your account. It was, it was basically a yellow pages worth of documents versus, uh, you know, versus, yeah, I make a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. Wink, wink, you know, 2007 that everybody's getting all these properties. So I think the world has changed tremendously, right? Tremendously. Uh, I think uh, I would venture to say probably 80% of all the leverage that was on the toxic leverage that was on the books from 2000, 2007, 2008, 2009, they're off, right? They're off, whether it was forced off being marked down uh, for, by the banks or forced into liquidation and bankruptcy by the individual borrower. But the point is we're in a different world. So now we're in a different stage, right? And now the, the fear is, well, SVB had this, you know, phenomenal collapse, uh, down 60%, you know, down 60% on Thursday session, FDIC came in very, very quickly. They seized control, uh, seized control of the bank. They closed their doors it, within 24 hours. Uh, they're, they're starting, I believe they're starting as of Monday. I could be wrong. Again, this is such a fluid situation, uh, that, that the FDIC is going to start to make everybody hold under $250,000, uh, in protection, 
Uh, obviously, if you have more than $250,000 protection in this bank, uh, you have a whole different uh, other narrative that you have to work around. Uh, but the point is, this is the, the second biggest collapse uh, by a bank, okay? Not a broker, by a bank uh, since 2008. The first one was Washington Mutual. So this is the biggest, second biggest collapse since the, since the financial crisis. And now the question is, what happens over this weekend? Uh, I'm sure the Treasury is going to have a lot of options on their hands. I'm sure there's a lot of banks uh, lining up because they did still have $200 billion in assets, from what I understand. Uh, or at least uh, cash, or it was what, one of the two. One of the two. Again, it's, again, it's a very fluid situation. So for what, from what I understand, over the weekend, they have several options. Either completely let them go to zero, uh, which is probably not going to be the case. Find the buyer, which probably will be the case, just because, uh, you know, Merrill got saved by Bank of America. Uh, you know, you have a whole bunch of uh, dominoes that were being saved by larger institutions. So I think some sort of, some sort of concrete or at least a concrete plan that's going to start to play out, you'll see over the weekend into Monday into Tuesday what actually happens uh, to uh, the institution, which is absolutely insane how quickly uh, things have turned. But now the question is, what happens next, right? And a lot of people still have long memories uh, from 2007, 2008, and people remember what happened, right? I mean, I traded to 2007 was a really tough year because we really didn't know how the market was going to react, okay? By 2008, we finally had a little bit of indication of how to kind of navigate, uh, how to navigate, um, you know, what was going on. Again, you saw a lot of bankruptcy, you saw a lot of foreclosures, you saw a lot of everything. And it was a, probably an incredibly, incredibly aggressive, hard market to trade. At one point, everything became, um, uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't short anything, okay? They made shorting uh, illegal, the only way you could have done it via puts. And I remember, you know, I remember twenty dollars stocks like uh, like a stock. I think it was Impex Mortgage. It was like a twenty five dollars stock. The only thing you could have done is bought like five dollar puts on this thing. And that's that's how aggressive it was. So, you know, that lesson what taught us, and this and that, and we always say time is the ultimate um, is the ultimate teacher. Okay, what you know, I, I was a better trader uh, year ten than I was year five. I was a better trader year twenty than I was year ten, and I'm a much better trader now, going on my twenty fourth year than I was. Well, 24 years ago. So experience, you know, I already went through it. You know, we already knew what was going to happen. We already, you know, now we already know and we're prepared uh, what's going to happen next. Uh, you can hear a lot of people, again, talking about everything's going to zero or blah, 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 blah. The first thing you want to do is get rid of all that's toxic, you know, toxicity. It's number one. Okay. You don't want to rely on somebody who is younger than, uh, you know, younger than, uh, the events of 2008, right? So the TikTokers, again, go away. Um, you're going to see a lot of people scramble for answers. You're going to see a lot of panic over the weekend. You're going to see a lot of people just completely, in layman's turn, lose their shit, right? This is a time to relax. This is a time that if you have an ear of a professional, experienced trader, I would I would strongly suggest to um, you know to 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 really try to. Uh, get on their good graces and try to soak up as much information as possible uh, because yes, in the next two weeks, you're probably going to have a lot of aggressive trading sessions, um, market going up 500, market going down 500 because volatility and a new cycle brings in expansion of volatility, expansion of aggression. And a lot of people, unfortunately, are not going to survive this because, you know, they can't, you know, think about it, the, the whole adage is, during a bull market, 90% of the people don't make money in a bull market. What do you think is going to happen here, right? This is not even uh, a conversation that we had in 2022 when the, you know, the bear market, and that's exactly where we were, uh, the bear market of 2022, when we saw a 33% move down uh, in the NASDAQ, uh, in the NASDAQ 100, uh, was very, very orderly, okay? When you have a spin cycle, uh, when you have uh, an aggressive news event that could potentially be, again, we don't know, this is the first layer uh, you know, there's a first layer. You're going to have a lot of companies come out. I think a lot of companies already started coming out over the weekend and start to get in front of this thing and start talking about their exposure to SIVB. Uh, you had Roku come out. Uh, Roku come out and they said they have about 26% of their uh, capital, okay, tied up in SIVB. They also announced, uh, they also announced that uh, business was not going to be interrupted, which is a good thing. Uh, you had the same thing basically with Roblox. They said they had about $150 uh, million tied up there as well. Again, same thing. 
Uh, they came out and said business will not be uh, interrupted. And, you know, you see other names, Lending Club, uh, Payoneer. I'm not really familiar with Payoneer. Uh, Ginkgo Bio, uh, you know, again, good amount of money in these places. And, and, I, and I feel you're probably going to get a lot more uh, 8Ks being released uh, over the next week of companies reassuring their investors or just reassuring the market as a whole that everything was going to be okay, right? We had some exposure. Uh, there's going to be some write downs. There's, there might be some short term, um, short term downdraft, but everything is okay. Now, again, somebody's going to turn around and say, well, yeah, Bear Stearns and Lehman said the same thing. They absolutely did. A hundred percent, right? A hundred percent. They absolutely did. And guess what? They both went to zero. So that's my point. We don't know yet. Okay. At some point you have to trust something fair value, face value. So when you're going into this week and you, you know, you're already mind, you're, you're already saying to yourself, well, that's it. Everything's going to zero, sell everything. everything. Yeah, maybe it will, but maybe it won't. Right. And that's the whole point. Take a deep breath. Uh, take it from somebody who was trading for a long time, way too effing long for one lifetime. Right. We've been through 2007, we went through 2008, we went through 2009, we went through the pandemic, right? Do you guys remember, this is more, you know, the fact that this is a regional bank, this is more, in a weird way, at least at the beginning of this conversation, this is at least more to the savings and loan crisis in the 1980s than it is to 2007, 2008, okay? Just again, do your homework before you start screaming this is the financial crisis. The market's going to crash. The world's going to end. Do your homework. Again, I'm not an expert in any of this stuff, but I've lived through a lot of this stuff, right? I've traded through a lot of this stuff. And the most important part is the people who are calm and rational and are experienced, okay, are going to survive. The people that are all over the place spreading false narratives that, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the sky is falling and maybe it does, maybe it doesn't but at least let the events play out. Again, this is the first inning, the first batter of the first inning. Maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing. But again, as we say on every single video, don't we have to be prepared, right? Don't we have to be prepared? They could come out over the weekend and you know have some sort of rational plan in hand that this is an isolated incident. I personally think it's not, okay, if I'm a betting man, it's not. There's no such thing as an isolated incident, but there, there's, there's, there's a degree of severity in everything, right? Maybe if you're a kid on a bike, you're you're riding your bike for the first time, you're learning how to uh, ride and you fall, you might skin your knee, okay? Years later, uh, God forbid you're in a serious car, car accident. You don't know. You don't know what life is going to bring. So for us to sit there uh, and speculate what this is going to turn into, Brett, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what this is going to turn into two, three, four, five months from now is ridiculous. All you're doing is putting tremendous amount of stress on yourself subconsciously okay and you're going to be constantly worrying that and that and that constantly worry is going to lead to health issues right especially uh, as you get older you know you start putting all this stress all this pressure uh and you start dealing with things that are not even in front of you yet and it causes a lot of health issues so the last thing you want to do is put all that pressure okay uh from the trading side okay um you know we we know what's what Okay, we know it's what it's. You know, nobody's gonna pull the you know pull the pull the wool over my eyes. Okay, we deal with the levels, and unfortunately, in 2007 and 2008, and again, somebody's gonna turn around and go, "You could throw your charts out the way if things start defaulting." Absolutely, we're not there yet. That's the whole point. We're not there yet. Okay, when we start defaulting, then yes, the strategy becomes different. You're gonna start getting for experienced traders. You're gonna start putting on a lot more deep out of the money put positions. Uh, with a little bit of time trading intraday for subsidized cash flow, we have a whole game plan at stake here. Okay, this is not a you know uh, you know this is not a fly by night. Let's see what happens tomorrow scenario. I'm prepared, man. I know I'm completely prepared to whatever the market's going to throw at me on Monday. Let's start with Monday. Okay, we don't know what's going to happen six months from now, a month from now, three days from now. Let's take a look at Monday, and that's the most important part, right? So we have all this news. We have all these. Uh, data points coming in from the Fed. Um, I heard an argument this morning that there might be, and again, this it, it totally makes sense. If this is a problem, think about this. Is if, if SIVB had their issues, right, with long-term treasuries, uh, there is a scenario I can see, and I, I agree. There was a guest on CNBC. I forgot who the, the gentleman was. And he said, there's, a, there's an idea out there 
there's a potential out of the you know out of nowhere uh, actually interest rate cut. Okay, to kind of put the you know put the whole inflation thing to the side and start looking at the bigger picture for financial institutions just strictly for solvency issues. So that's always on the table as well. So you're going to see a lot of moving parts, guys. Right? You can have you see a lot of moving parts. This is where you really have to understand and appreciate technical analysis. Again, I get it. There's going to be certain days that charts are not going to matter because news is going to trump all. Uh, those days we understand they're going to be violent, they're going to be aggressive, and it's not going to be for the for the faint of heart or for uh, the brand new trader. But for as an experienced trader, somebody's been you know in that foxhole for nearly 24 years, we're prepared, right? One day at a time, one trade at a time. You know, no panic, no stress, no rush. And for all you guys who've been uh, in the webinar with me for nearly almost 14 years, and especially. Oh, over this past week, you know what it is, right? This is probably, this past week was one of the best action weeks I can remember. At every level of every stock got taken down. Whether, you know, again, if you look at uh, thir Wednesday's video, we talked about uh, 298 and a half to the upside, uh, 294.87, remember, held twice to the downside. Both of those channels broke, right? The 98 and a half went to 301. Then later in the day, it was so violent that they took down that 294.87 level and went all the way down to 291.80s. 291.80s closed right on the 50-day moving average, right? These are, these are things you can't control. You can control your levels. So going into this week, guys, here's the key levels, right? Assuming no incredible outrageous news comes out and obviously everything else that we talk about now completely uh, gets thrown off the table. But here's what we're looking at. Okay. If the, the Qs, the Qs need to hold 387, 287, excuse me. If the Qs don't hold 287, that means it confirms the 50 day moving average. Uh, again, if you watch the videos uh, throughout our, our time together, you kind of know how important the 50 day moving average last year, 2022, we were 85% below the 50 day moving average, which triggers a bear market. Obviously these new, he these news headlines are not going to help. So uh, to, uh, 287, keep an eye on the cues. If they start losing 287, we go down to 284. We lose 284, and if there's more uh, of a new spin cycle, things are going to get uh, very, very aggressive. Uh, if you look at the spies, again, we talked about the spies on Wednesday's video as well, right? We talked about the spies on Wednesday's video. It lost this uh, two, 392 level, traded all the way down to 384. Uh, spies start losing this whole channel here, this 384, 383 level. Uh, we're going to go all the way down to, to, to uh, 376. Again, be prepared, right? Be prepared. And if you're a brand new trader, you know, again, the last thing you want to do is go on social media and project your frustrations on a, on a trader who's been doing this for a long time, right? You know, I've been short lift for two and a half weeks, right? And finally broke down at a 15% move. This is, this is the slowest, low, the slowest damn breakdown of all time. But obviously, as you can imagine, uh, as you can imagine, um, you know, it, so everything started to expand. And, you know, every time I talked about Lyft, somebody says, ha ha, you're crazy bullish. What's bullish about this? Let's just really look at this. Well, what's really bullish about this? So I, I get it. New traders, you're stuck in this trade. Long-term long investors, you're stuck in this trade. You're stuck in everything. You're stuck in Tesla. You're stuck in NVIDIA. Everything is terrible. The walls are closing in. Guys, remember, we didn't. I didn't force you to get long a random stock at, at a random time. You're underwater. Don't project your frustrations on me. Don't project your frustrations on any experienced trader that you have access to because eventually they'll stop talking, okay? They don't care, okay? They don't care that you're sitting in a position that is not, uh, you know, that is not unfortunately to your liking, okay? They're, they're doing their own thing. Everybody has a different time horizon. I'm a trader. I trade channels, okay? Uh, intraday channels. If I get a runner, I'll keep it overnight. I don't, you know, it doesn't make a difference to me uh, where something was three months ago, where something's going to be three months from now. Okay. It doesn't make a difference. It's all about the interval. So the idea that if you're a brand new trader, you're projecting your frustrations because you're upset of what you did to yourself. Again, eventually experienced traders, there's not a lot of them. Okay. Experienced traders are going to eventually just stop talking to you. They're going to stop posting. And then you're going to be sitting there by yourself, screaming at yourself, you, you know, you need people with experience of this type type of your uh, of your investment career to put you on the right track to kind of show you how to start hedging your overall portfolio to not to sit there like a deer in headlights 
um, that potentially could really destroy your trading career or aspiring trading career. So use this time to learn. Use this time as as uh, as an area that is going to your mental data bank that hopefully five, 10 years from now, if you're still trading, right? If you're absolutely still trading, uh, that this could be an incredible learning tool for you. So going into this week, guys, we're fully prepared for everything. We know our uh, important levels, uh, you know, you can see Tesla sitting on the 50-day moving average. This thing loses the 50-day, right? We talked about the 86 breakdown, the 80 breakdown. This thing is all the way down to 166. Uh, any close below 66 on Tesla, you know, starts an incredible cycle, just like with everything else. So we're prepared. We're calm, okay? Uh, we're not, you know, we're not listening to the to the fear mongers or the people who are bait-clicking you that want to, you know, they want to... Uh, drive emotions. We're calm. We're experienced, and most important is we're professional. And guys, have a great day. Stay safe. Have a course of action, and with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.